It's a sort of light colored, light gray, uh, quite opaque. Um, it could be grape, it could even be some very, very nasty things with a very nasty color. That <laughs> <laughs> so color would never be something that would prevent me from drinking something unhealthy, for instance. Something that had gone off and had a very odd color to it. definitely orange juice so it has to be the orange color the orange juice color we tend to take things for granted we take the visual world for granted we think we are given color and depth and motion it's difficult to focus on these things unless they can be isolated sometimes an accident of nature will isolate them, as in a person who is totally colorblind. Last winter, I went to Norway on the first leg of a journey that was to take me to a remote coral atoll in the Pacific. I had come to meet Knut Nordby, who was born totally colorblind. He was to be my companion for the onward journey. Our goal would be to understand color and color vision, how it works and what it means. You have something which I don't have, as I have something which you don't have. Yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, and, and we're different beings in this way, and, I, and I, I'm very curious about your world. I wish I could enter your world for a time, although I think I then like to come back to my own. Yeah. And, and what about you? It Are you curious been, about my yes, world? <laughs> indeed, indeed I am. This thing called color, what is it? What is the quality that makes a red thing so different from a green thing, or a yellow or blue thing? Here's the myriad dimensions of a very rich human life, but there is a particular strand running through it. And the strand here, of course, is Knut's congenital color blindness, his achromatopia. To what extent does this inform his life? To what extent is it informed by his life? To what extent does it matter? What particular adaptations may there be? Many of us are partially colorblind and find problems distinguishing reds and greens, but Knut sees no color at all. This is because his eyes completely lack cones, the special cells required for color vision. Cones are also needed to discern fine detail, and Knut therefore has poor visual acuity as well. He must rely instead on the other visual receptors we all have, the rods, which are enormously sensitive to light and designed for night vision. Thus Knut sees especially well in the dark, but he is virtually blinded by bright light. My plan was to extract Knut from the dark north and take him with me on a 10,000 mile journey to the island of the colorblind. Pingalap is a tiny island six degrees north of the equator and hundreds of miles from the nearest landfall. 
I had heard that it was home to the largest community of colorblind people on the planet. We were about to enter a world where color blindness is so common that the experience of color cannot be taken for granted. What would it be like, we wondered, to grow up in such a world? A world where one's parents, one's teachers, one's friends might also be color blind. Most of the island's children came out to meet us. Straight away, I noticed that some of them were blinking strangely, just like Knut. Besides Knut, I had invited along my old friend Bob Wasserman, an ophthalmologist, to help us explore the situation. To explain it to you, that's when I had to use the word color. This tablecloth with nice flowers on, it's a very dark tablecloth to my eyes. I would guess it was red. And then we have all the nice colors of the food, which of course only translate into levels of gray for me. I think this is a sort of greenish thing, but um, that's probably because I know what it is. Bananas usually are yellow. If they, the internals of a banana is yellow too, I wouldn't know, but it's, I guess it was yellowish. Bread, of course, is a sort of whitish. Um, the fish could probably have some red in it. It's, it's, um, and this, it's hard to say. Dark green, maybe. But I'm just guessing. When we had our flights here, I had some very fine views of cloudscapes, of the coral reefs. To me, they were very beautiful, very interesting. I was told that there were some very special colors there, which were even special to people with color vision. Some azures, I think it was. When I saw these reefs, sort of words like cerulean and turquoise and burnished metallic colors came to my mind. I sort of um, wondered if I should keep them to myself. I wondered if it was sort of cruel. For me, blue is the color that people say the sky has. I know that blue also can mean uh, being sort of sad. I'm myself an acrobat and I've been, has had this fantastic opportunity of joining this group to meet acromats in a very different place, in a very different setting from where I come from. And hopefully, through my own experience, to be able to give them some ideas of how to live with this condition. On our first morning, we went down to the dispensary. We had sent out word inviting the colorblind to meet us. 